Guess what? It's April and it's time for your tarot reading. I'm sorry I lost my voice. That's why they're a little bit late and that's also why it sounds like shit, but let's get started. Hey Virgo, this is April 2019. Okay, so what's going on in your social life? Straight out the gate, they're like, here's some challenges. That's annoying. But they say the challenge is to maybe sort of like walk away, cut your losses when somebody lies or deceives you, okay? And they're saying it's also challenging to do this in a way in which we are compassionate and caring and loving to ourselves, but then simultaneously in our verbal expression to other people. Now, this is face-to-face -face conversations, phone conversations, FaceTimes. It's not texting. It's not typing. It's not Facebook message. It's um, verbal communication. And so it's kind of saying, okay, you know, when somebody lies to us or they cheat on us or they deceive us or trick us in one way or another, that really hurts, doesn't it? And it's not easy for us I mean, number one, it's not easy for us to be like loving and kind to that person, especially if we confront them, but it's also not easy for us to be loving and kind to ourselves. Sometimes we like wallow in it and then we're like, oh man, I'm so stupid. How did I get myself into this situation? But you need to talk to yourself the way that you would talk to a friend who is going through something, you know, similar. You wouldn't tell your friend like, hey, yeah, you're right. You are so stupid. This is completely your fault. I don't know how you couldn't see that coming. Why did you open yourself up to somebody again? That was a stupid risk. Also, you look fat today. That's not how we act. You need to be kind and loving to yourself, um, especially like with the thought processes we have. But more than that, this month, it's really important for you to do that verbally. Okay? Now, when somebody betrays you, when somebody deceives you or lies to you, um, you're going to want to be like, well, I'm really sad that that happened. I'm pretty disappointed. I feel sad. Instead of pointing the finger, you're an asshole. You're a cunt. Can't believe you did that. You're insensitive. It's like, I feel sad. And because the rest of it's implied, but you're taking the higher road. You're Michelle Obama. Okay? So... That's not a really awesome way to start your reading. I'm so sorry. Um, so what then can we do to better support ourselves from, um, aside from what we already discussed? And they're like, think about what it is that makes you happy. That, you know, what does your happily ever after look like? Because it is coming for you. And here's the thing. Like, even in our friendships, you know, we can have better, more beautiful Friendships, we can eliminate loneliness, like we can banish it. I don't know why they say banish. That must be an important word for somebody. It's not a word I use. But we can eliminate that. We can get rid of it. We can banish it from our lives if we can envision, you know, what like having a real bestie is like, what that relationship is like, um, how joyful you would be in that. And they say, but it does require you first to kind of walk away from, you know, people and circumstances and things that we loved, or maybe even we still love quite a bit, but it's just time to move on. Because here's the thing, as our vibration raises, and we start attracting more and more of these happy, wonderful things into our life that we really want, other people are not going to necessarily keep up with our growth. So, we can occasionally, this is you, this is other people, you can occasionally reach down and try to pull them up. Okay, but if they don't want to come up, they're going to start sinking and they're going to drag you down. So sometimes you just got to cut the cord and, and, you know, go like this. Oftentimes when people try to save other people from drowning, they get pulled under the water as well. And then it's two people who drowned to death. And that's very grim again. And I'm so sorry. I wanted to start the reading really positive. And I fucked up. I should have um, envisioned this as positive since Virgo is my rising sign before I did it. But you know what? Here's the good news. We got rid of the bad news right away. And it's not even bad news. It's good news. They're saying, like, look, all of these awesome things that you want, they're here for you. They're coming for you. You're only limited by your own inability to imagine them. So in your social life, as far as your emotional well-being goes, imagine what it's like to be happy. Imagine what like these kind of relationships and situations you want to be in are like, and you start attracting those. 
Uh, but you might have to kind of let other things go in order to create space for those things to flow in. And they say this is something that you should actually, you know, check in with your spirituality, whatever way you get kind of in tune to your spirituality about whether you meditate, you do yoga, you read tarot cards, you check your horoscope, you know, um, whether you pray, whatever, check in that way. And a lot of those answers are kind of just going to pop into your head. They say like without that, it's going to be very challenging for you to kind of get this insight or awareness um, naturally. It's not like a thought that just shows up because it's provided by source energy, okay? Now, what's going on for your career? And they say, um, this is not the kind of month where you want to be over giving. Um, but, you know, at the same time, some of you, it's like, you, okay, <clears throat> sometimes you might overgive a little bit of um, money. You might overspend. You might, you know, over tip. I don't know. And also, and also, like, a lot of times that's really awesome. And those things kind of come back to us, like, 6 to 10 to 12 fold. However, this month is a little bit different. They say what you want to be giving is kindness and love in your verbal communication again. So Virgos, it's all about verbal communication, communicating very lovingly to other people, to yourself, um, you know, even at work. Like, so for example, if somebody said, hey, can you take on this other, this, this task? Um you might traditionally kind of take that on because if you want something done right, you do it yourself, right? But this is not the month where you want to spread yourself too thin and you don't want to go above and beyond this month. This month, what you want to do is you want to say, you know what, I'm so honored that you find me capable and that you believe I do a good job. Um, however, this month, I need to take a little bit less on. I'm, I don't want to be burned out and overwhelmed. I want to continue to do a good job. And so I'd appreciate it if you could delegate that task to somebody else. That's the way you'd want to communicate that this month. Um, anything about your money, because career and money are often tied, but not necessarily all of the time. Um, they say, there's not too many details here, but they're just like, think about your relationship to money. Do you love it? If you love money, you can get more of it. You can have more of it. So um, you want to make sure that you're in alignment with having money, with loving money, so it flows to you easy. Um, I think I talk about this quite often, but Christy Marie Sheldon has some really good videos on abundance blocks. And one of the things that she talks about, so you should look those up on YouTube, but one of the things that she talks about is how, like, you know, if we believe money is the root of all evil, for example, and we believe we're a good person, we are not in alignment with money. Therefore, it has a hard time flowing to us. See? Things like that. We want to kind of reevaluate our um, feelings about money. And we want to be like, I love money. Money is a tool for me to do good things for other people. And maybe that's kind of why this month you've got to tone it back a little bit that way. Instead of demonstrating that, you got to believe it at your inner core so for, th for things to really start moving for you in a positive direction. And it's not like things are negative, but more positive, okay? Now, in regards to your love life, single Virgos... They're saying, like, you already kind of know. <laughs> they go, and also, like, it's not that deep. Basically, they're saying, like, you could get lucky this month. You could end up with a really good um, person for you with a lot of snuggles who's silly and fun where this relationship could be going places. It's very lucky. But some of you are not going to experience that because you're not taking um, – the appropriate steps to meet that person. So, you know, maybe you're resisting uh, online dating. Maybe you are not starting conversations with strangers at the coffee shop. Maybe you're not uh, reaching out to your crush. Whatever. There is a definite action step that you need to take if you want to be one of the lucky ones, because not all of you are going to be. Um, it says, you know, also, I want you to keep in mind that, yes, there is... Um, this is kind of a lucky month for some single Virgos, but they say the luck isn't going to show up overnight. So it's kind of like take action steps and this might start paying off for you in May or even June. And for some of you, it might be end of June, unfortunately. But they say like, you know, 
you're laying the foundation for your future if you are brave enough to kind of take these steps, to take an action step. Um, so I would definitely try to do that if it were me and I was a single Virgo. Okay. Now for those of you who are coupled, they're saying, um, sometimes not talking about things is better. And they say, or, you know, hinting at things slowly. Now, personally, my personality is the antithesis of this because I feel better if I just like rip the band-aid and I'm very assertive and confident I'm just like here's the deal and then once I get it off my chest I can get over it really quick um and it's not to say that this is about any problems or anything but for whatever reason in dealing with your partner this month you're going to want to slowly tiptoe and approach things um that way especially if it comes to things surrounding job um, moving, buying a new home, selling a home, moving in together, that sort of thing. The reason why it's important is because your partner might be a little bit more focused on what could go wrong instead of the blessings or the benefits and what could go right. And this can create a lot of confusion for you because you're a rational being, okay? But, uh, you're going, it's like going to bring in all of this like extra stuff and kind of cloud your mind. And it's not going to help you to make any decisions. And so you think you're doing yourself a favor by bringing things up so we can reach a conclusion, so we can move forward. But actually, it's just going to throw more shit in your face that you have to sort through and sift through. It's going to bring things to your awareness that maybe you didn't think before. And you know what? That's sometimes helpful. But in this scenario, it's not. They're like, just do it slow. Just trust us. It's... And it's really annoying when they say that, when they're like, just trust us. But it's because they feel, they being your angel, spirit guides, you know, the universe, whatever, um, feel very strongly about this. They're like, the intuitive insight and answer isn't going to come to you very easily this month. It's just not the time. It, you got to kind of, the, okay, they go, look, you think you have all of the information, but there are some things that you can't see yet. You'll be able to see them by the end of the month. Information is slowly going to start trickling in. You think you have all of the information. You have most of it. But new things could be brought to your awareness and it could create confusion. So just... <laughs> Anything else for couples? Um, they go, you know, this is a good month for you to try to spiritualize your relationship. Praying together. Meditating together. Um, praying for your partner. Meditating on your relationship. Um... Reading your partner's tarot cards, tarot spying. That's my favorite hobby. Actually, that's probably a lot of the readings that I do. How does Joe feel about me? Why did Curtis cheat? Stuff like that, tarot spying. You could do that. <laughs> um, they say, you know, whatever it is that you're kind of kind of deal with your partner this month, it's like it's going to kind of extend for a while. It's not just like April only. And so that's why it's kind of in your better interest to kind of like let sleeping dogs lie. So for those of you in undefined relationships, polyamorous, you know, on again, off again, maybe it's just not labeled yet because it's new. They say that this is uh, maybe the kind of month where you want to watch your budget. Um, how much are you spending when you go out, when you do fun things, or on a partner's birthday gift, or, you know, who knows what, on whatever it is you spend money on. They're like, this is a month where, even though I know, like, that should be in the money section, right? But this is specific to undefined relationship type of people. So they're saying the reason why is because... It's in your better interest to sit here and go, wait a minute, is this expense worth it? Now, how does that apply necessarily to your love life? And they say, because there are things surrounding your love life that you cannot see yet, that they haven't become available. And um, the thing is, is part of you doesn't want to see that uh, because, you know, actually saving is just for your highest good this month and maybe you don't want to admit it to yourself. So for example, let's say you are in a new relationship and that's why you're watching this portion called Undefined Relationships. You might be trying to wine and dine this person, you know, going on super fun dates. You might be going to really nice dinners, trying to impress them. And it's just maybe not the right thing right now. Because, not because it's going to create financial strain or difficulty, but because there's probably things that you don't know about them yet that might be game changers or deal breakers. Let's say, for example, 
you started dating someone and they seem, you know, completely perfect in so many ways, everything you ever wanted, and then you find out that they have some crazy fetish porn addiction that um, takes over their whole life, and before you know it, you're in, you're really sick of, you know, tying yourself to a bed, you know, with cucumbers sticking out of your ears, and, um, banana peels all over like it could be something like real weird and freaky that you're like I like you so I want to try to be into this but I can't do this twice a day seven days a week It'd be something weird like that it could be you know even if for example if you are in a relationship that has multiple partners maybe you're spending an unequal amount on one of your partners and that's going to create some sort of tension in that dynamic. I mean, it could it could play out in so many different ways. That's why, you know, for personal reading is you're going to get better more precise information because there's a lot of Virgos. But basically for those of you in undefined, they're like you can still have fun. Have a lot of fun. Experience a lot of joy. Um live it up this month. But be careful what you're spending. Okay, now, for Virgos, generally, what is your affirmation for the month of April? I'm going to say, I close my eyes, I think positive thoughts, I breathe in and out, or I breathe goodness in and out. <sighs> totally true. That's exactly where we started, right? So, I close my eyes, I think positive thoughts, and I breathe goodness in and out, because it's just going to radiate everywhere else. So, love you so much, and I'll see you in May. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!